Hello, good night. In this chapter, we will be covering data networking basics. We will be covering data network types, common data network services, data networking technologies, local area network technologies, cabling types, LAN transmission protocols, methods, and topologies, and LAN media access method. LAN devices. When we examine data network types, we examine various forms of or various types of networks. These may include LAN, local area network, a MAN, metropolitan area network, a WAN, wide area network, PSDN, public switch telephone network, wireless network, cellular and PCS, and satellite networks. These are various forms of networking types. Data network types, LAN. These are a network of computers in a localized area, such as an office, a campus, or warehouse building, functioning with limited geographic location. The smallest LAN consists of two or more computers connected together, whereby there can be a very large LAN consisting of thousands of computers connected together. Computers and devices are connected via switches, hubs, and Ethernet cables to form a LAN. This diagram shows an example of a typical LAN. If we examine, we will see that we have the servers and the following other devices, such as the clients on the network, which is connected via a hub or a switch. Wide area network. As opposed to a LAN, a WAN covers a large geographic area consisting of multiple computer networks. WANs may be privately operated for a specific user community or may support multiple connection protocols or might provide network connectivity and services via interconnected network segments. Examples Extranets intranets, and VPNs, what we will discuss further in the later slides. The Internet. When we think about the Internet, we think about everything connected online. We can stay from our homes or from a computer and book a plane ticket. We can send emails. We can visit our favorite websites. We can do shopping. We can print from home. We can even store things on the cloud service, the internet, the world wide web. Internet. Internet was founded by the DOD, Department of Defense, using TCP IP for data interchange. Internet. Intranet. Here we will be discussing intranet. Intranet uses TCP IP and HTTPS standards. The intranet was designed for internal communications within the organizations, such as human resource, health and safety department, and accounts departments. The intranet is used more or less for internal communications, for example, posting of vacancies to inform employees about health and safety policies and for let's say if you're thinking of accounts for release of financial statements from the company within the organization intranet can also be or more or less is like a logical private network using the firm's physical network infrastructure Intranet 
provides more security and control as opposed to posting on the internet. Like what was previously mentioned, where HR department can post vacancies within the organization, or health and safety department can post safety tips about, for instance, carnival or defensive driving or whatever requires safety awareness. Extranet. Extranet is an external access to the company network through VPN and user authentication. External users are granted access to the company's network but is not open to the general public. Some users of the Extranet may be employees who require to log into their network to the company's network to access relevant information. It may also be useful for vendors who require access to the company network. As mentioned previously, the Extranet is the connection for external access, meaning you can be outside of the company network and still have access to controlled information on the company's network, which is usually done through user authentication. Common data network services, file services, sharing of data files and subdirectories on a file server. These are basically done through user access on the network. Mail services, sending and receiving emails internally and externally through an email gate device. Print services, sending documents to a shared printer or print spooler. With print services, there's a network printer assigned and all users on the network can send prints over the network to print. A print spooler is responsible for collecting and prioritizing all of the prints that go to the printer. Domain name server or domain name service. This translates or matches URL requests to IP addresses or location of the server being requested. An example of this is if you go in your browser and you type in google.com, your DNS will then translate the written words Google to an IP address of the server in which Google resides. Here we will briefly talk about some types of network cable types. Here we have unshielded twisted pair known as UTP. We have shielded twisted pair known as STP, coaxial cable and fiber optic. LAN technologies, twisted pair. STP, which stands for Shielded Twisted Pair, provides protection from electromagnetic interference leaking into and out of the cable. This cable consists of four pairs of wires, each color-coded, wrapped in a tin foil or an aluminum foil shielding, which allows for higher data rate and longer transmission due to less interference with the transmission. This slide will show the construct of the shielded twisted pair cable. As we can see, the four pairs of color-coded wires are inside of an aluminum foil, which provides a shielding for EMI, which is electromagnetic interference, which then goes into a PVC jacket to protect the entire cable. Unshielded twisted pair cable. This type of cable does not have shielding. It is more susceptible to electromagnetic interference. This form of cabling is widely used in LAN applications, mainly because of its costs. These 
UTP cables like the STP cables are available in different types or different categories of cable. Each one of the category represents the tightness in which the pairs are wrapped, which allows for higher transmission distances. As we review the unshielded twisted pair cable, we can see the construct of the cable. If you examine, you would see four pairs of color-coded wires, which is covered, each pair is covered in a PVC coating. Then there is an overall shield, which runs into the outer jacket. With this type of cabling, you can get speeds from between 10 to 100 megabits per second. This type of cabling is moderately cost, hence the reason for widely being used in LAN applications. The maximum length this cable can be run without the use of a repeater or booster is approximately 100 meters. UTP cables, unshielded twisted pair cable. Category 1. These were used for telephone communications. These were not suitable for transmitting data. Category 2. Capable of transmitting data at speeds of up to 4 megabits per second when considered not really fast. Category 3. Used in 10 BST networks can transmit data at speeds up to 10 megabits per second. Category 4, used in token ring networks, which can transmit data at speeds of up to 16 megabits per second. Category 5, or CAT5, can transmit data at speeds of up to 100 megabits per second. The popular and most known category of cable at 5e is used in network running speeds of up to 100 megabits per second. At 6, a newer and faster technology typically consists of four pairs of 24 AWG gauge copper wires. Category 6 cable is currently the fastest standard for UTP. Category 7, a new and Expensive category of cable can transmit data at speeds of up to 1 gigabit per second. Another form of cable types used in data networks are the coaxial cable, known as coax. The coaxial cable consists of a copper wire directly to the center of the cable, which has an insulation covering that wire consisting of a PVC material. This then goes into a copper mesh which function as ground and all of this is protected by the outside insulation of the cable. In the later chapters, we will discuss some of the benefits of coaxial cables. When we examine coaxial cable, we can say coaxial cable is more efficient and less susceptible to electromagnetic interference. This is because of the various form of insulation and protection the cable has to transmit data. Because less interference occurs, data can be transmitted at greater bandwidth and greater distances than twisted pair. Copper cable, as we've seen previously, is built with a metal shield with inner and outer insulation to block interference. When we think about coaxial cable and the types used in LAN applications, there are two main types that are used. One is Tinet, which is RG58 size 
and the thickness RG8 or RG11 size is used. Coaxial cable can be used for two types of transmission methods. One is baseband. This is where the cable carries only a single channel. Broadband. This is where the cable uses several channels such as data, voice, audio and video. Of course, when we hear about broadband over coaxial, we think of, we can think of many providers which offer these services. Such providers are Flow and Novo Communications, where more than one service comes over the coaxial line. Here we will be examining another type of cable used in network technologies, such as the fiber optic cables. There are various types of fiber optic cables, such as outdoor cables, indoor plenum, outdoor aerial cable with messenger, and indoor outdoor cables. Another medium of transmission used in data communications and data networks are fiber optic cables. Fiber optic cables is a physical medium that is capable of conducting and modulating light transmissions. Fiber optics allows higher speeds and can go over greater distances due to less attenuation. The signal in fiber optics is carried as light waves. This is one of the form of data transmission types that is more resistant to interference. Fiber optic is used to connect backbone devices in larger networks. It is most reliable and expensive, and it is most expensive to install and terminate. LAN transmission protocols. LAN transmission protocols. Carrier sends multiple access, CSME, also known as persistence carrier sense. With CSME, workstations continuously monitors a line while waiting to send a packet. Transmission only occurs when the line is clear. The destination sends an acknowledgement to the workstation on receiving the packet. If not, the workstation resends the packet thinking a collision has occurred. In non-persistence carrier sense, workstations wait on a random amount of time before resending the packet. We also have CSME CE and CSME CD. CSME CD stands for Carrier Sense Multiple Access with Collision Detection and CSME stands for Carrier sends multiple access with collision avoidance. We will talk about each of the following in the slides to come. CSME CE. With CSME CE, workstations are connected with two coaxial cables. Each cable carries signal in one direction. It only communicates on a transmit cable if detected no carrier. CSME CD, however, operates in a different form. With CSME CD, before sending data, the host listens for traffic on the network. Information is only transmitted once the line is clear. 
The transmitting host continuously monitors the line to ensure no other host begins transmitting. If for some instance, a signal is detected on the line, a jam signal is transmitted, causing the other host to stop transmitting. This form of technology, CSMACD, was developed to deal with the problems of collision when different nodes try submitting or transmitting simultaneously. Another form of LAN transmission protocol is polling. With this, primary workstation checks secondary workstation at predetermined time to see if there is data to transmit. Secondary workstation cannot transmit until the primary workstation gives permission. This form of protocol is mostly used in low-level peer-to-peer networks. Another form of LAN transmission protocol is token passing. This is used in token ring, FDDI, which is Fiber Distributed Data Interface, and ARCnet, Attached Computer Networks. Token passing involves a special frame known as a token being passed around the network. The holder of the token is the only device or node on the network with the right to transmit for a period of time. Token passing avoids problems we see present in CSME. Here we will be talking about LAN transmission methods. There are three forms of methods what we will be discussing. Unicast, Multicast, and Broadcast. Let's talk about Unicast. Unicast is where the package is sent from a single source to a single destination. Multicast involves the source packet being copied and sent to specific multiple destinations on the network. Broadcast is where the packet is copied and sent to all of the nodes on a network or segment of a network. Think of broadcast, multicast. Unicast, as the word uni, uni implies, is single. Broadcast, think of one to many. Land transmission methods. Here we will be discussing bus topology. With the bus topology, the transmission on the network travels the entire length of the cable to the other stations. When there is a break in connection with the cable medium, on the bus topology, there will be a disruption with accessing the nodes. However, a failure in one of the nodes will not necessarily have an effect on the other nodes. This diagram is an example of the bus topology. If we examine both ends, you would have a terminator, and the line that runs in the middle is the transmission medium or logical network that connects the computers. On the bus topology, as you can see, data flows in both directions. Here we will be talking about ring topology. As we can see, the computers in the ring topology forms a logical ring connecting each of the devices. With the ring topology, network nodes are connected via unidirectional transmission, also known as half duplex transmission. This form of topology utilizes the token ring and the FDDI. Star topology. 
With the STAR topology, every network node connects to a central network device such as a hub or switch or computer. It is easy to add another computer to the network and if one computer fails, the rest of the network functions normally. In this slide, we will examine the construct of the STAR topology. As we can see, there are four computers and a printer connected directly to the hub. This hub could have been replaced with a switch, a network switch. Here we will re be reviewing the mesh topology. With the mesh, it manages high amount of traffic. With the mesh topology, multiple devices can transmit data simultaneously. And as previously mentioned, each computer and network device is interconnected with one another. The cost to implement a mesh network is somehow higher than other network topologies. In this slide, we will be examining LAN devices, such as repeaters, hubs, etc. Let's start with repeaters. Repeaters are devices that receive the signal and retransmit it. Repeaters amplify the data signal to extend work segment due to signal deterioration from attenuation. Repeaters do not filter or examine addressing. Repeaters simply take in a signal that is slightly or severely deteriorated and amplifies it and retransmit it. Let's say that again. A repeater simply receives a signal, a deteriorated signal, amplifies it and retransmit it. Here we will be discussing hubs. What are hubs and what are hubs used for? Hubs are used to connect multiple LAN devices such as workstation and servers. Hubs function similar to a repeater. However, with a hub, when a package arrives at one port, it is copied to the other ports. All devices connected to the hubs can see packets being transmitted. Bridges. Bridges, however, operate differently from hubs. Bridges amplify data signal and adds intelligence. With a bridge, if the MAC address of the destination is not present on the network, the data is forwarded to all devices on the network. A broadcast storm can develop, causing a halt to all devices. In this diagram, we can see how a bridge can connect two networks, two or more networks together. Here we will have the PCs 1 to 4 under one router and PCs 1 to 5 under another router. The bridge is inserted in the middle in the network layout to allow communication or, as the word says, a bridge between two networks. If we examine the addressing scheme of the first network is 10.0.0.0 and the second network is 20.0.0.0. Switches. Switches facilitate sharing of resources by connecting all devices together, such as printers, computers, and servers. Switches send packets to specific ports where the destination MAC address is located. Immediately, we can see how a switch is different in functioning from a hub. A switch is more 
an intelligent device when compared to a hub. Switches operate on the data link layer of the OSI level. With switches, only the intended recipient receives the package as opposed to all of the recipients receiving the broadcast and receiving the package that is sent through the switch. Routers. These are intelligent devices for forwarding data packets. Routers operate on layer 3, which is the network layer of the OSI model. Routers can connect multiple switches and their respective networks. Routers can also be considered as gateways, meaning the router could connect to external networks located on a WAN. How does a router function? How does a router know where to send the package and to which destination? Each packet that passes through the router is examined and its destination is read before it is forwarded using the router's routing table.